we look at the history of humanity is not until in the recent past that we've started to see children, babies, as human beings learning and growing. It's, it's part of, I think, a generational issue where discipline, punishing, was seen as normal. You know, that punishing a child by hitting, by spanking, by doing corporal punishment was seen as part of being a loving parent. And from what I've, from what I've, I've learned, it wasn't until the turn of last century when people like Eric Erickson and their social and their psychosocial um, theories came up where people realized, oh, the baby in utero is learning, is hearing. There's things being formed at a very young age. Child labor laws were also something that changed that. You know, children before were seen as parental property. All of that changed when we started realizing there's, there's a soul, there's a spirit inside children. And even if you look at some of the art, some of the children look almost devilish because there was a belief that it was a parent's responsibility to literally beat that out of them. Um, there's also sayings, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. And when people, if, when people don't have the opportunity to see beyond that, they just follow what they do. You know, we, we learn and we repeat. And there's a small space in between where we can become conscious of what we're doing. And unfortunately, a lot of parents do just repeat what they learned in childhood. Mm -hmm. It's those repeated patterns pass on, you know, from generations to generations. And it takes, what well, I like to say, a strong soul to stand up to that and say, no more in my family mm -hmm. the way your father sounds like has done. Absolutely. It is my belief that we all choose the family we are born into. So that already tells me that if I choose to come into a family, and I'll use my mother and father as a great example, they made a choice to come into that fabric. That was the tapestry that they chose to walk into. And then there comes a choice where you're going to repeat everything the way it's been, or are you going to be the one that changes everything? I think both my mother and father, they both have shared with my sister and I how they made a conscious decision that whatever was done to them, they were not going to repeat. My mother was very aware of my father's past as a child, and, he, and she knew. She knew enough. She wasn't a therapist or she didn't study, but she knew enough about human behavior that told her this is going to be a pattern. And she's told me about sitting down with him, talking to him about it. And there was one episode, I remember when I was about four or five, where my father lost his patience with me and he struck me with a hairbrush. It, it's such a, an image for me. I remember looking down and seeing that hairbrush mark because it was shocking. I had never been hit before, not in that manner. And I remember my mother becoming almost bullish like, it's like, that was it. It was never going to be repeated. And they had tremendous conversations around that. And that changed everything. That never happened again. Um, so again, given the examples, I know people can make that conscious decision. What's difficult is when children grow up, they don't know different. There's a part of them that starts to believe that the maltreatment is normal. The other part is that children are incredibly loving individuals. I have met with children who've been through horrific situations and still have immense love for their parents immense love and how do they betray a parent by thinking something different of them yeah that's just gonna make you cry <laughs> <laughs> it's okay yeah. and i really say that from an, uh, a loving place for them i often say that it wasn't until i started working with this these children that i learned about unconditional loving because i never met one that didn't love tremendously despite everything you know, and when there's so much love for a parent, it's like they don't, they don't want to knock them off that pedestal so quickly. So they're so willing to just let it be. And the other piece of it too, as children, we have this amazing magical thinking. We think we can make a difference, right? A lot of children say to me, it's like I kept looking for a sign, you know, 
or they would just know when dad did this, when mom did this, or if they grew up with other people, you know, uncle or aunt. They would always watch for signs. They, they always wanted to prevent it. And when the abuse occurred, it's like they take it upon themselves. Mm -hmm.